This is the new Arbath 500 and uh, it's electric. Yes, this is the new Arbath 500E, and it actually is dressed in Scorpionissima trim, which is the launch edition version. It gets a few extra features like this acid green paintwork, but it also demonstrates exactly what we can expect for the full run model later this year. Now, starting at the front of the car, the headlights are slightly different. You probably noticed they don't have the LED lighting up top, like the standard 500E. They've got a bit of black coloring up here, and you've got some black letters for the Arbath badge on the nose as well. In fact, the whole front bumper is redesigned and the car looks more aggressive and prettier, I think, as an Arbath as well. Now down the side, Arbath has fitted to its electric car, the first set of 18 inch wheels to go on a 500 from Arbath. So they're bigger than the standard wheel you'll get on this car. We might see a smaller wheel on the standard run car and they're also unique in design. Now you've probably noticed the Arbath lettering down here as well, which has a 3D effect. It's not actually 3D, is it? No, it's not, it's totally flat. 3D effect here chosen apparently by some Arbath fans on Instagram, I believe. And same here, we've got the Arbath logo with a lightning bolt through it to emphasize this is an electric car. Now the eagle-eyed viewer might have spotted we have disc brakes down here as well. Now you don't get that on the standard Fiat 500e because you don't need it on electric cars. Typically they've got regen, for example, but this is obviously a hot hatch and it has 155 horsepower and over 200 newton meters of torque as well. So it will crack 62 miles per hour in about seven seconds, which you might know is about the same time as a 695 petrol model can do. So obviously with that extra performance, it needs disc brakes and I think it makes it look better as well. Now at the rear, one of the most prominent features on certain Arbath petrol models has always been those exhaust pipes. Some of them, the 695's got four at the back. This, of course, doesn't have any exhaust pipes, despite it making a noise on startup, which we'll talk about in just a second. Instead, you've got this diffuser down here, a diffuser effects to the rear bumper, and a much cleaner design on the rear here. I really like this Arbath lettering up here. They've gone from having a badge on the previous version to having just Arbath letters up here. I think it adds to that quality. And overall, this car just looks more muscular because it's got a wider stance. The 500E platform with its battery in the middle is longer and wider. And then with this Arbath here, with these 18 inch wheels and these swelled arches and everything, it just looks that bit much more muscular. And this added muscle also emphasizes the extra performance this thing offers. In fact, it's 1.6 seconds faster around Fiat's Bolocco test track than the petrol 500. And you know what? Inside, nowhere is that sportiness more clear. Now inside, it is of course relatively familiar because much of the stuff is carried over from the standard Fiat 500e. And that, by the way, is a very good thing. Firstly, the seating position in these cars is so much better than the previous version. Firstly, you can adjust the steering wheels, not only its rake, but also its reach. So you can have the wheel pull closer to you and the seat actually feels pretty low in the car. Despite this car having a 42 kilowatt hour battery in the floor, I'm still sat nice and low and snug in the seat and the seats themselves are, they're very lovely actually. They're quite unique. The finish is unique to this Sportissimo trim but actually the shape is going to be the same across all our bath models we're told when they launch later this year what am i looking at in this interior well if i press the start button here but i don't fire up that noise which we'll talk about i promise you get to see how this car has its unique displays now much of it again is very similar to the standard 500 it's a functional nice widescreen display and the digital instrument cluster here is nice crisp and clear all the things you'd expect you get your apple carplay all the essentials but you also get unique drive modes to the Arbath model so if i flick this switch down here I can cycle through the modes. Now the standard mode is Turismo. Turismo mode doesn't soften off the suspension because of course this car has passive and slightly stiffer than the 500e suspension, but it does slower the responsiveness of the accelerator and also it caps your power and torque. So it gives you your best potential range. Uh, Arbath hasn't finalized its stats for the range by the way at the moment, but something between 155 and 170 miles of range is expected. So given this is a small car, that's not too bad at all. In fact, it puts it smack bang where the Cooper S electric from Mini is. When it comes to the other modes, I can cycle through to Scorpion Street, which does what it says on the tin. This is the mode which gives you your Scorpion, so sportier feel, but when driving on the road, I suppose what this is really gonna do is it's gonna give you a faster accelerator pedal and just maximize the torque. But also it actually maximizes your regen as well. And that's also true in Turismo. So it means you can drive basically without using the brakes because the regen is slowing the car down as much as it can. But then if you click through 
to the fastest mode, that Scorpion track. That then keeps you at maximum power, gives you a maximum punch from the electric motor, but it winds the regen back to a lower setting. So the car will feel much more like a standard hot hatch. So you come off power, it will coast and roll along. So I suppose that's probably gonna be the nicest one to use on the motorway. Uh, and also Arbath reckons some buyers are actually gonna take these things on track. Now, the crucial thing for that, of course, is keeping your range up and having fast charging capability. This car will charge with 85 kilowatts of electric charger, and they say they'll get from 10 to 80% in about 35 minutes. So that's probably about as long as it's gonna take for you to have a quick cool down and let those tires cool down as well. Other goodies you get with this being an r 500E are the fact that because it doesn't have a transmission tunnel compared to the petrol 500, you get some storage space down here. Or I say storage space, you just have space, no transmission tunnel here. And look, that opens up space for an extra cup holder to go on top of the one you get as standard down here. Also, you get a bit of storage space up here. So while this is still a small car, it's got loads more practicality than the previous 500 from Arbuff. And you might have noticed that this car has a pretty big sunroof. In fact, this car is of course the hardtop model, but 30% of registrations so far for this limited edition car are apparently for the convertible model that will also be launched. And if you're familiar with the previous petrol model, you'll know it's a fabric top that folds back, it doesn't obviously peel off like a standard convertible. And that does mean you can actually remove the soft top and lower it at speeds of up to 60 kilometers an hour, which is pretty useful. And also, this car weighs about 1,330 kilograms, which, given that 290 kilograms of that is the battery, means it's actually not that much heavier than the petrol Arba 500 we know so well. But crucially, most of that weight is low in the car's floor. What's it going to be like sitting in the back though? Uh, yeah, it's predictably small in the back here. I mean, they always have been these 500s, whether it's the Arbath or the Fiat model, these are tiny cars. And of course, now with a bit of battery in the floor, it does feel quite snug. But that being said, I'm in here and I've mentioned before, I'm just under six foot, I fit. So for shorter journeys, I think this would be absolutely fine. I think for a small family, maybe you're a couple with a child. It's enough though. What about the boot though? So at the back of the car, the boot is actually the same size as the standard car. You don't lose anything in here in terms of room, which means it's snug, but you know, it's plenty. And this is of course, a small car. You do get some underfloor storage down here though, which is obviously quite key, especially for this being an electric car, means you can hide your wires out of sight in there. And then you've got the boot for anything else you need. So it does everything it needs. And then some, this car comes with all of the frills and all the excitement that you got from the petrol model when it comes to design. And I've spotted a few of the features that are really, really getting me excited about driving it on track. I mean, firstly, look at the negative canvas set on this car. Both of the wheels are set with a slight angle which suggests it should go around bends pretty nicely. And one of the tech guys earlier told us that this car puts the power down very well. In fact, he reckons it doesn't need a limited slip differential or any of that kind of stuff because the grip on this front axle is really very good. And I think that's illustrated partly in that lap time of Bilocco. But of course, what matters most is how quickly it goes around our track, Rockingham. We already have a time on the board for the 595 Competizione petrol car. So it'll be very interesting to see how this electric model does by comparison. If that's not worth subscribing for, I don't know what is. Now, of course, we can't drive this car today, but there is time to check out its final party piece. Now, this feature isn't necessarily going to be standard across the Arbar 500E range. Even on this limited edition Sportissimo car, it won't be the default setting. You'll have to switch it on. But I think it's telling. It says the Arbar 500E is all about the thrills and Italian flair. And of course, those performance stats and that lap time suggest it should also be pretty exciting to drive as well. But most importantly, it's all about the fun. See you soon.